Yesterday, 2K Sports dropped a trailer for NBA 2K21 on the next gen console, specifically on PS5. And unlike most of what 2K has done over the last year or two, it was actually pretty well received and represents maybe the biggest jump in sports gaming that we've seen in at least the last five to seven years, if not longer. But how much of what 2K showed is actually viable and how much are we going to see when we get our hands on the next gen game in a month or two? Let's discuss. So this trailer dropped again, like I said, yesterday at the time of recording. Uh, it has well over 100,000 views at this point and a pretty favorable like to dislike ratio, which has got to feel pretty good for 2K, who is famous for uh, continuing to set records for <laughs> dislike ratios on their videos. Uh, if you haven't seen the trailer, it's two minutes. Go check it out. It's up on IGN right now. It's a pretty good trailer, all things considered. And there are lots of things in here that really feel like a huge next generation jump. And you look at some of the headlines that have been written about the trailer and, and you know what it contains, and you can see how many people are really excited about what this jump could actually contain. But I wanted to actually look at, as someone who has watched all of the technical briefings for the PS5 specifically, because that's the console that I'm gonna have in my hands come November, uh, I, I think I know at least a fair bit about what the technology of these consoles is and how much of this may or may not be realistic, given what we know. Um, so, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the graphical fidelity. That is the one that stands out immediately first shot of the trailer. You see uh, Zion Williamson, you see the sweat dripping down his, his head, um, and you see, you know, I mean, you can see little details, like you can see the difference between his pupil and, uh, and the actual, you know, like the color of his eye. Um, you can see, you know, some of his facial hair, and it's not like a kind of perfect uh, beard like you normally see. There's actually like some scraggles in it. Um, it it's, it's really, really good looking. I mean, he looks like a real human being. Uh, the question of whether or not this is realistic, uh, that's an incredibly technical question that I don't have the facilities to answer completely, uh, but I want to address just just the basics here. So what we know is that the next gen platforms are going to ship with much more powerful graphics processors than we've seen in any console before. Graphics processors that rival, if not outdo, uh, those that we can find in modern computers right now, like the one that I have in my computer that I'm recording this on. Um, and every anytime you see an increase in graphical power like that, um, you'll obviously see an increase in graphical fidelity. So uh, will you be able to notice that the next gen version of 2K21 looks better than the current gen version of, uh, of 2K21? Yeah, absolutely. I think you will definitely notice that. How much better will it look? Well, for this, um, hair specifically, I mentioned the facial hair, hair is extremely hard to do, um, even with with extremely uh, well-designed, very powerful uh, graphics processors. It's just hard, and we'll come back to things like hair and that kind, of, that kind of stuff that can go along with graphics, but that stuff is always very challenging. So I wouldn't expect the facial hair to look that detailed, you know, if you zoomed all the way in on, on a player just in the course of a game, um, is it going to look that detailed? I doubt it. Um, and not to mention, you know, 2K has kind of a reputation for um, gussying up the look of their games in their trailers, even though this, this is not a CGI trailer. I mean, this is real time running in engine on the PS5, so this isn't going to look drastically different, not like watchdogs level of different from the final product, but go back and look at the 2K19 trailer specifically is where I noticed it, and then their their trailer since then, they just, they don't look as good as what the actual game ships with, and that's because they have a lot more time to mess with the lighting and, and um, you know, all of these other, all of those other things that you can do in engine to still make it look better than what it will actually look when you're playing the game. So. Is it gonna look this good every single second that you're playing 2K? History would, to me, seem to indicate no. 
However, because this is running in engine, is it going to look again noticeably better on the next gen than it does currently on PS4 and Xbox One? Yeah, I think it definitely will. I think that's safe to say. Um, I wanted to skip ahead to talking about this. This is the most interesting thing to me. About 20 seconds into the trailer, you see a shot of Luka Doncic coming down the tunnel to enter the stadium uh, with a bunch of screaming fans and stuff, which uh, is very refreshing for those of us that have been watching sports for the last six months. But this is, to me, something that is actually a truly next-gen leap in terms of what 2K can do, and something that I think is actually doable uh, given the given the next gen technology, so I mentioned how much powerful, how much more powerful the graphics processor is, and all of that is true, and that's going to help the the graphical fidelity of the game. Uh, they have a much more powerful computer processing unit in the systems now, and so that's going to help with things like physics and other and and actually and you know kind of the the equations of figuring out you know how many fans there are and where they are and that kind of thing. That's what CPUs help with, and they are going to have a more powerful one. So this is going to help this. But what they also ship with, which to me is the biggest change in terms of what we're actually going to see, and it seems to be what at least PlayStation seems to believe is the greatest leap in next-gen technology, is they are shipping with solid-state drives and very, very fast solid-state drives. What this means is it's going to be much easier for a game to load assets quickly and store more of them on the system rather than having to you know go to a mechanical hard drive which is far slower and load them up that way obviously you've probably heard that this means that you won't have to have two minute elevator rides while a game loads the next uh, chunk of the level that you're going to but from what i've from what i understand it actually means a lot more than that what it means is there's just a lot more assets that the game can have available to it at any given time and pump out to you. So when you look at this shot, how look at the variety in the crowd. That's what's stunning to me. Not just the fidelity of it, which again, I don't think will be as good in the final game, but look at the variety. There's like, th there's two dozen different shirts here. It, just in the foreground, you've got what, five or six different shirts. Uh, that that people are wearing. Everyone's wearing different pants. Some people are wearing hats. Um, you know, the women have different hairstyles. All of this is because all of these graphical assets can be stored on the solid state drive and recalled by the system in an instant, rather than on mechanical, where you only you have a limited number of assets that the system can actually recall. Uh, not only that, but the animations that they go through. So the guy on the right. Um, who is uh, extending his hand. That's an animation that could actually change. Doncic running by, uh, it looks like Mark Cuban, and doing this little handshake with him. Uh, you know, that again is an animation. Those are several assets that the game now can store as, and it, it won't take up as much of that valuable space as it would have when it was using a mechanical drive. So this scene here, with, Don, with Doncic making his entrance and all of these things happening. I mean, it looks like an actual NBA basketball game. I think that this is actually a lot more realistic than it may seem using the, the, the solid state storage. Not only is it fast, but because it is specially designed to be integrated with the CPU and GPU of the PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X, um, what it actually means is that not only is it faster than mechanical because it's solid state by nature, it's faster than even a normal solid state drive because it's designed to be integrated with the particular parts, which is something that a PC cannot do. Everything else that is in the next gen console, consoles, eventually the PCs will catch up with it. And in terms of the graphics processing, uh, PCs already are catching up with it with the new RTX 30 lineup. But the idea of integrating solid state storage directly with the CPU and the GPU is something that a PC cannot compete with because uh, you don't buy PCs like that. The CPU and the solid state storage, they come separate. So this is something that does actually seem to me to be realistic and you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, um, this camera that you're seeing here, you notice how throughout this entire thing, Doncic making his entrance, this is like 10 or 15 seconds, the camera is following him the entire way. 
the entire way down the thing. It's exactly like what you would see with uh, with a handheld camera following a player who's coming out through the tunnel. Once again, because of the solid state storage, because now the consoles will be able to recall, it'll be able to call up uh, animation and image assets so quickly. That kind of tracking shot with all of this stuff going on, I believe is actually possible. I believe that you could see something very much like this, and that's not the only one that you see in the trailer. There are several times where you see these long tracking shots that follow fans, follow players, things like that. I believe that that's very much possible, again, because of the solid state storage. So, to me, of everything in the trailer, that particular scene stood out to me. It's actually the reason why I even wanted to make this video. Because everything else, from the, gra from the graphical fidelity, you know, everything that you're seeing, that part where they can truly use their uh, advantage when it comes to solid state storage, that is going to represent the biggest generational leap because every sports game can use it. Not only does it, not only will it help in terms of, uh, like I said, fan variety, which is huge, but the number of animations that can be stored. I believe, if I if I'm not mistaken, animations come come in as assets that have to be called by the CPU and then rendered by the GPU. Well, if you have more of those assets available to you because of your solid state storage, you can have more animations. So, I mean think about like in a Madden setting, we've been seeing the same 10 animations for tackles for basically the last 10 years. Well, now we may actually be able to see, uh, you know, some variety when it comes to that. Um, another cool thing, um, right at, uh, right at the, towards the end of the trailer here, there's something that is really, really cool that I wanted to point out as well. Um, I believe it was when, I think it was Doncic maybe? who hits a three, and you actually hear the fans, you hear, so Doncic puts the shot up, and you hear the fans yell three as it goes in. Once again, that is something that now can actually be done. Fans like truly responding to what's happening. I mean, when you play sports games, the fans, yeah, the fans will get louder uh, sometimes when things happen. I mean, if you really notice, then the fans will kind of get louder, but think about in a real NBA game, the fans don't just gradually get kind of louder and quieter depending on what's going on. The fans really are engaged. I mean, they're yelling three. They're booing when things are happening. I mean, this is, that's what real crowds should feel like. And again, with more sound assets being able to, to be played. And if you watch the uh, PlayStation explanation of what the PS5 is and all of the new next-gen technology, they they did a lot with sound. They were very, very invested in making sure that sound was going to feel next gen as well as the as well as the visuals. And part of that meant storing more sound assets, playing them in a more realistic fashion. So, you know, depending on your sound profile, if you are wanting to listen to the crowd, then that crowd yelling three should be just blaring in your ears because that's what uh, an NBA crowd would feel like. That's what it would sound like. If you hit a three in a big moment, you would hear the fans respond to it, not just by getting louder, not just, you know, you wouldn't just like turn the volume up on it. Um, it you, they, they would actually, you know, it would feel different. It would feel like, you know, you've just hit a three in a big game. So all of that to me is very, very encouraging. I believe Again, other than the graphical fidelity, everything else that I've talked about, I believe is actually going to be something that we can see once the next gen consoles ship, once we get our hands on them. I believe that we'll see some of this stuff. I believe that it'll feel more like game day. You know, it won't just be like, uh, you know, it won't just be like the NBA game day crew that you have. It's not. It's not just gonna be those guys talking at a desk somewhere and then we go to a loading screen and then immediately poof, you're back in the game um, and it, just, it, do, it doesn't feel right. I don't believe that it can, that it's just gonna be that. I believe that now you can really have like the NBA Today desk like actually at the court, you know, at the facility that you're at and you can go, you know, when they've wrapped up if you care to listen to them, which again, if they want to if they feel like recording more vo more voice lines and wanting to work that in there, they can. 
because again, you have that solid state storage. You have a lot more assets available to you at any given time during the game. And so you can actually go from that desk and kind of pan away from the desk straight to the court without going through a loading screen. And it's just little things like that that really increase your immersion in the, in the game. And it's something that we have never really seen before in a sports game. All of that being said, the obvious question here, is any of this even going to happen? I just spent 15 minutes telling you that it's possible, but is it going to happen? And that is the point that I'm actually a little bit, I should say a lot more skeptical on. I believe that it's all possible, but the question of whether or not it's truly going to be integrated in the way that, that I envision it, um, you know, that's something that 2K has not given us any indication that they are going to make a huge generational leap. I mean, there's there's been nothing to indicate that 2K has the desire to basically totally rework their game, considering that they didn't have any time. I mean, they didn't even give themselves a year. I mean, when you look at like the WWE 2K series, they, they canceled 2K21, so they're not even making a game this year. So they actually have time to figure out what they wanna do as far as next-gen consoles are concerned, maybe design a new engine or make tweaks to their current engine um, and actually design a game around that. This time, though, with the NBA series, they didn't have a year off. So all of these things that I'm talking about, when it comes to more animations, when it comes to more sound assets, when it comes to more dialogue lines, when it comes to all of that, that stuff, just because the machine can call that up, just because the solid-state drive will have that, will have those assets available at any given time, you still have to create those. You have to record those. You have to create the animations, design the animations, probably motion capture the animations. All that stuff takes time and it takes money. And at least in terms of time, that is not something that 2K has. That's not something that they have even when they're not trying to leap to the next generation. I mean, just in between 2K19 and 2K20, I mean, I'm not even joking. I couldn't even tell the difference when I was playing. Like the mechanically they feel a little different but if I were to just look at it I could barely tell which one you know I was seeing I again I believe that it will look better noticeably on the next gen consoles but all of this going back to better physics more animation more sound assets just more variety so that not every game feels the same all of that means that you actually have to design each and every one of those things from the sound to the animations to the lighting i mean we'll get ray tracing so again the, the lighting will look a lot better but you actually have to design the lighting in and in, in order for lighting to look better you have to be very careful with where you put the lighting sources which once again takes a lot of time that's time that 2k does not have anymore so even though everything i just said and everything that we see in the trailer is possible does that mean that we're going to see it in the final product beyond maybe a cutscene or two? When you when you fire up NBA 2K21 on PS5 or Xbox Series X, you go to play now. Are you going to see what we've seen in this trailer? Are you going to see players making their entrance in this long tracking shot? Are you going to see the varieties of fans? Are you going to see are, are you going to hear more sound assets? Are you going to see better lighting? Call me a pessimist, but my answer right now is no. I don't believe you will. I believe that in your basic game to game uh, experience, you're not gonna feel much different. It's gonna look better noticeably. You're gonna say, wow, that looks pretty good. And that's it. That's what you're gonna get. I think it'll be a couple years before we truly start to feel like we've hit the next gen when it comes to sports gaming, which is really sad because I, I think I speak for a lot of people in the sports gaming community when I say that I would have much rather companies just not make a game this year or last year, preferably, um, and they focus their time on developing something that truly feels next gen. Whereas what I believe we're gonna get is a game that looks better than what we see on current gen and maybe has a few new kind of flashy things that happen, maybe a few new cutscenes that look great but other than that, I think from a game-to-game -game perspective, we're just not going to see that much of a difference between what we're playing today with NBA 2K21 and what we're going to be playing in a couple months 
uh, NBA 2K21 on the next gen. So again, call me pessimistic, but I really believe that we're just not going to notice that much of a generational leap right now. I think it'll take a little while, and I think that's sad because what they showcased in this trailer is something that I really want as a broadcast nerd. I really want to feel like I'm there watching or participating in a professional sporting event. I want that to feel uh, like it felt when I was 10 years old and playing Madden 08 for the first time. I want it to feel like that. I felt like I was there, you know, because I was a kid. I want to feel like a kid again. Uh, and I believe that Next Gen gives you the opportunity to do that, but I don't believe that it's going to be harnessed properly uh, in this title for NBA 2K21 or in the next few installments for any sports game out there. And I think that's sad. But I'm always willing to be wrong, and I will be playing uh, 2K21 when it comes to the next gen, so we'll get to find out together. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope that 2K is going to blow us all away and they're going to recognize that they've made so many mistakes when it comes to PR in the past. And they're going to say, you know what, right now we are going to buckle down and we are going to deliver a truly next gen experience. And if they do that, I will be the first to come back here and say I was wrong and we've been delivered a truly next gen sports game. I hope that in a couple months time, you can come right back here, subscribe to GA Sports, and watch that very video of me saying that I was wrong about this game. In the meantime, subscribe, go check out uh, GA Wrestling. The uh, link is down in the description. So we really appreciate you. Again, I hope I'll see you in a couple months making that video about how this one, I was totally wrong. We appreciate you.